Welcome to This Week in Boomtown. We are watching areas grow faster than some places can handle. And with one million more people moving to this region in the coming decades, there is a lot going up and even some coming down. So here's what we uncovered this week in Boomtown. An iconic downtown Columbus landmark learns its fate, the controversial decision that will flatten this brick building, but what will go up in its place? Plus the long time abandoned Eastland Mall set to be demolished. But with the next chapter in sight, see what city planners are doing to make the area prosper. And there is a focus on food deserts. See the battle one central Ohio community fights to get their hands on fresh produce. Our reporters experienced it firsthand and we'll show you what that looks like. The future of the old spaghetti warehouse in downtown Columbus came to a head this week. After months of discussion, the Downtown Columbus Commission approved demolishing the building on West Broad Street. Thanks for joining us for this week in Boomtown. I'm Angela Ann. Now, the owner says there is no other option for that building but to tear it down. In his place will be two buildings, one of which will become home to more than 230 new apartment units. During this week's Downtown Commission meeting, the owners said it would have been nice to save and restore that building, but that just wasn't economically feasible. They say safety is the main reason why engineers felt demolishing the building was the only choice. And that's because the condition of the roof is quite dangerous after it partially collapsed two years ago. Owners say whatever design the new buildings take place, they will preserve the history of that building. I do want to express how difficult it is for me to part with such beloved building that once generated so many memories, about 300,000 guests. Right now, the plan for the new building is to make sure 30% will be new affordable housing with parking underneath. And this week, we learned more about possible plans for the now shuttered Eastland Mall. The once flourishing building has sat vacant for almost two years. The Columbus City Attorney's Office says the owners have faced several fines effect, and after neglecting rather to address code violations. Just this week, a status hearing at the Franklin County Municipal Court addressed plans to demolish the old mall. And 10 TV's Kristen McFarland has more on how that could impact a local school. Plans are in the works to demolish the Eastland Mall after it's been sitting empty for almost two years. But with a school connected to the property, securing the safest plan becomes a little more difficult. It was a big mall. Everybody came together. Years ago, the Eastland Mall was a thriving place to shop, eat, and enjoy the east side of Columbus. It's a lost memory to everybody that was out here for years. Now the property sits empty, fenced in, and abandoned. The only activity in this lot is from neighboring schools like the Eastland Prep Academy. Uh, we have elementary school kids running around and the idea of a demolition plan moving forward without our input uh, just doesn't really make sense from a safety perspective. The city has slapped the owners with multiple code violation fines. While plans continue to push forward, the latest application to demolish the old property was rejected by the city. While um, you know, work is happening at the property, including some asbestos remediation, the concern of the city is that there is no end game here without a demolition of that mall. We have made progress um, and we still plan on doing that. Uh, the demolition contractor has been paid. The city and property owners say the mall will be demolished, but the city will not knock down the Sears building or the Eastland Prep Academy. Another hearing is scheduled later next month. In Columbus, Kristen McFarland, 10 TV News. Kristen, thank you. Now, news of the demolition comes as the East Area Commission works on a plan for the future growth of the Eastland community. The saga has been going on for years, in fact. The city of Columbus first filed the case against the owners back in 2021 after multiple inspection violations from inadequate lighting to potholes in the parking lots. The next year, the owners were held in contempt after the city attorney said they failed to make any improvements. The city of Columbus declared the mall a public nuisance that same year, causing the mall 
to finally close its doors after 54 years in business. Well, right near that mall, a vacant shopping center will soon become a new place for families to access food and other resources. Now, this comes as the soaring cost to live in central Ohio is putting pressure on families. It's the vacant Eastland Shopping Plaza right there on Refugee Road. Columbus Mayor Andrew Ginther says the city will invest $4 million into what's called the Eastland Prosperity Center. The 67,000 square foot center will offer a free food market, a community health center and other resources for neighbors living in southeast Columbus. People behind this initiative say this will also bring new jobs. I'm hoping we hire a lot of people from the neighborhood. You know, we'll need a market manager and a market team to run this market. We would love to hire. We've had a great partnership already with the librarian community that's here. The Mid-Ohio Food Collective says that center is expected to serve more than 100,000 people from across the region every year. The city expects construction to start sometime early next year with hopes of opening in 2026. Now, last year, Columbus Public Health identified 42 neighborhoods where food imbalance exists. One of those areas is the hilltop in West Columbus. Now, it's where we held our first 10 TV Listens Community Town Hall this week. And those who attended the town hall told us thousands of people call the hilltop home. And they say getting the fresh, healthy produce they need is really a challenge. So 10 TV's Colin Dorsey took those concerns to top city officials this week, asking the Columbus mayor what's being done to make fresh food and produce more accessible. If you live in this area of Sullivan Avenue near Burroughs Elementary, your two options really for fresh food are the Kroger off Wilson Road or the one off Harrisburg Pike. Both are miles away, and if you don't have a car, that means catching a bus. For me, that means the number six. Can't buy no groceries no one on Sullivan Avenue. You have to get have a have a car or you got to ride the bus or walk at the 10 TV listens town hall in the hilltop. One of the top concerns for residents was living in what they call a food desert. We don't have groceries around here, so it's pretty it's pretty hard if you don't have a car. Having to travel for groceries is a reality for Charles Harvison, Betty Tesfai and others who call the hilltop home. Last night we held a town hall with people of the hilltop and their big thing was, we don't have a grocery store. All of our pharmacies are closing. We feel like city leaders do not listen to us. How do you answer that? Well, one of the things that is really important is for us to partner with others to provide some of those resources, fill those gaps. He points to the Mid-Ohio Food Collective's markets on Norton Road and Sullivan Avenue as the beginning of that. I wanted to see how long it took to get to the Kroger off Wilson Road by bus. So I started my stopwatch and climbed aboard the number six bus. So I've taken the number six bus as far as I could all the way to Broad Street. Now I need to cross Broad Street and catch the number 10 bus that's set to arrive in about six minutes. So I waited on another bus. So then I now had to take the number 10 bus two stops, but in order to get to the Kroger, I have to cross Broad Street once again. So as you saw, in order to get to this Kroger from Sullivan Avenue, it took me two buses crossing Broad Street twice in about 26 minutes. In Columbus, Colin Dorsey, 10 TV News. Colin, thank you. Great explanation there. Now, we also asked Mayor Ginther if he's aware of any partnerships that would bring fresh food to the hilltop. The mayor says his team is talking to partners like the Mid-Ohio Food Collective, also Giant Eagle and Kroger. Now, if you need to find a market, you can look for our link on our website, 10tv.com. Meantime, we will continue to follow up on the mayor's plans to address this food insecurity issue. Well, with housing issues in every boomtown across the country, the homelessness crisis is a real concern. This week, Newark City Council voted to pass con a controversial legislation that bans camping on public property. It is now illegal to sleep on public sidewalks, streets, or benches. Some people believe this ban will impact those who are experiencing homelessness. Well, I am for this legislation. And we, as the city of Newark, need to stand up and do what is right. You guys want to make it a crime to be homeless. You know, public property is pr public property. You know, you can't dictate who comes on, on it, when, where, and how. Critics say this move addresses a larger issue of affordable housing, not to mention shelters being often full, leaving many people with no other options. 
Well, now to our eye on education. This week in Boomtown, as the city of Columbus grows, it's looking to consolidate nine schools. The CCS board is expected to visit those nine buildings recommended to close by the end of this month. Now, the board president says it's still uncertain as to when this change will happen. It's too early to say, but certainly, um, you know, we want to do what's best for students and we want to do what's best for, you know, their, their future of their academic experience. The next scheduled Columbus School Board meeting is happening November 6th and 10TV will be there. Meantime, over to Hilliard now, city schools there, they really need to replace three elementary schools to help accommodate the expected growth in student population. Community members came out this week to ask questions about the proposed Hilliard levy on the November ballot. That money would also build a new preschool center and a third building for sixth graders. However, if it fails, up to $10 million would need to be cut from the operating budget for the next school year. Over to Marysville, the school district there also has a levy on the ballot. And here's what's at stake. The levy money would go to extracurricular funding, transportation for those extracurriculars, and help with class size caps. All of this outlined on a post on his Facebook page. However, if the levy fails, Marysville pay-to-play fees would increase to $770, and the school resource program would be eliminated. The district also says they would start a hiring freeze. Well, powering up all the new data centers in central Ohio is going to cost a lot of money. And this week, AEP Ohio came to an agreement that ends one of those power struggles. AEP, Walmart, the Ohio Consumers Council, and the Ohio Energy Group have agreed to pay 85% of those energy costs. Now, that comes with a 12-year commitment. It is a slight departure from what AEP had originally wanted, which was the data centers to pay for 90% with a 10-year commitment. However, this settlement will ensure that customers aren't on the hook for any of those major additional costs if those data centers back out of central Ohio. The deal, however, has yet to receive approval from the Public Utilities Commission, and that vote won't happen until next month. There's a new plastics recycling center opening in Hilliard. This new $65 million facility is expected to create roughly 200 new jobs. It's called Advanced Drainage Systems. It is the largest plastic recycling company in all of North America. Ohio Lieutenant Governor John Houston says this center will be a big boost for the economy and the environment. The raindrop falls and it gets disseminated out there into the world. This is the place at ADS where they use drainage technologies to improve water quality for all of us. The Lieutenant Governor went on to say that more businesses like this will help create a draw for other companies to maybe relocate to Central Ohio. And that is just one of the facilities helping the environment in a booming Central Ohio. Production at Illuminate USA is in full swing in Pataskala. That company is the largest solar panel manufacturing operation in the country. Illuminate leaders say the technology is the most advanced in the world and many of those solar panels made in Ohio are being used to power local government buildings. Well, more money announced this week will go to improving two central Ohio airports. The first is a nearly $2 million investment for the Port Bucyrus Crawford County Airport, and that money will help design and build a new terminal for regional flyers. But there's another one, $8.5 million being used to buy passenger boarding bridges for John Glenn Columbus. This year, CMH experienced record levels of flyers, and those numbers are expected to grow as more people move into the region. The airport is also about to undergo a massive $2 billion expansion next year. And take a look at these images. It shows what the new terminal with seven additional gates, as well as a larger security entrance to cut down long security lines, will eventually look like. Pretty sleek, like out of the Jetsons. Well, it's not just the skies. More money is coming to improve safety on Ohio's roadways as well. More than $60 million in funding from ODOT's Highway Safety Improvement Program will support 19 safety projects statewide, including two right here in Franklin County. The projects will do everything from installing roundabouts to creating pedestrian pathways, including one on the north side of Eakin Road in the city of Columbus. Remember, you can learn more about these projects and get the latest updates on what's happening on the roads. Just go to 10TV.com slash traffic. And don't forget, we do have our 10TV Plus original, Welcome to Boomtown. You will see how our stories seek solutions for everyone in Central Ohio. I'm Angela Ann, and thanks for watching This Week in Boomtown.